Hey, Gary Hoover here. Today I want to talk about a concept, well, it's got a big name. I call it multidimensional differentiation. Big words, you know if you've read my stuff and everything, I really don't like buzzwords. But this actually is the best description for what I'm going to talk about. Differentiating your products or services from your competitors, making sure you're offering something that's unique and different, really adds value to the customer, is so important. I urge you to read the book Positioning, The Battle for Your Mind by um, Al Reese and Jack Trout. I think I got their name right. Reese and Trout, for sure. 25, 30-year-old book, wonderful book about how you find a position in the marketplace. And I think it's still uh, probably the best marketing book ever written. But it's so important to differentiate yourself. And yet, as I speak at conferences for different industries and meet people in different industries and different competitive situations, competitive dynamics, all that, what I often find is they're so limited in their thinking about differentiation. One of my favorite cases is the hotel and motel industry. So I, I love that industry. I've always loved it. Conrad Hilton was one of the greatest entrepreneurs in history, as was Kevin Wilson's, Kevin's Wilson, the Holiday Inn guy, and, and, uh, and several others. And I've spoken in the industry. But if you look at the industry, you're, most of the differentiation between the hotel and motel operators is on the price scale. They're either high price or they're low price. And they go at the top, you've got Four Seasons, and you've got uh, Ritz uh, Carlton, and you've got other operators, but those are two that are always up at the top of the list. And then, you know, however you want to define it, and there's, you know, W is in here somewhere and everything, wonderful outfit. And then you kind of your old, long, old fashioned mainstream guys, Hilton, uh, Sheraton, Hyatt, uh, Marriott, the main Marriott, the original brand. They've also got upscale Marriotts. And then you come on down to, you know, your Holiday Inns or whatever you want to uh, call. And then down to, um, well, somewhere in here, um, Holiday Inns been around a long time, but Hampton Inns, owned by Hilton, is an excellent operation. La Quinta from here in Texas, another wonderful operation. And on down, and, you know, eventually you get down to your Super 8, Deluxe 8, whatever, and your Motel 6. Well, differentiating by price, and with that comes some things. These rooms are bigger, they have better Kleenexes, they give you a, a bathrobe uh, to borrow and maybe sell you a fancy one. So there are factors, but you could, in an industry that big, with because people are living in those spaces. It is, in so many ways, such an intimate experience to sell someone lodging, a room for the night or the week or whatever. You could open, my number, 300 motels tomorrow that just serve people who had pets. Well, not tomorrow. I'd urge you to open one, test it out, open a couple more, grow it gradually. But you, the U.S. could hold a bunch of those. Now, I'm not sure how they would be different. You know, they obviously would have immediate access to a lawn area for each one, a little pinned area, and da 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 You'd have to study it and think hard. Every business idea I ever dreamed up, I spent two to seven years working on. You could open a bunch of serve seniors. Maybe they'd all be on the first floor. Maybe they'd have extra big bathrooms with railings, whatever. Maybe you could, you could have one for a, a, a chain just for people with little kids. You know, you could have one for people that are gadget people. Uh, a few years ago, it's changed now, but a few years ago when I spoke to uh, uh, hotel uh, groups, I would say, look, the average U.S. trailer home has a nicer TV than you do in your fancy hotels. The thing is, is that in any industry, that's just one example, we're not locked in to just one dimension of differentiation. It isn't just like there's high price and there's low price. There's demographic differences. There's geographical differences. Um, and, and, and I will say, I will say, I do have to say on lodging, W went on a different track. They took a stylistic differentiation. They may be the same price as a lot of competitors. You don't confuse W with the other guys. And the same with a group called the Kempton Hotel Group, just a wonderful operation uh, based in San Francisco. And, and bed and breakfast, that was the one industry differentiator. But still, there's all these other opportunities. And, and I look around, like financial services, a great industry in terms of its future, its potential, so important our society and yet so little differentiation you know if you go to the banks how do they compete well you got a big bank and you got a bigger bank and and you do have to some degree people saying look we're small town we're local hometown banks 
Very little room outside of that. I was working with a firm that has government contracts, and I was thinking, and they got receivables from the U.S. government, and, and bankers look at it and not sure how to evaluate uh, that. And I'm like, gosh, you could start a whole bank. All they did is loan to companies that serve the federal government, a whole chain of banks or whatever. You could ser start uh, a financial services uh, investment advisory firms that just uh, served uh, women doctors. I mean, you know, if you just got one or two offices, I don't know, maybe women doctors, you could build hundreds of offices. I'd have to think about it. The thing is, there are always opportunities, and, and they're in different dimensions, because every product, every service, it's got durability issues, reliability, friendliness, ease of use, a lot more things than just price. And, and what I would look to for inspiration is look at the auto industry. Because let's face it, when that industry started, you just had a Model T at one end, and a Cat Packard and a Cadillac and the expensive cars at the other, basically. And, and now, man, you know, what's a sob? Well, they may have some issues. They may be too small. But at one point, their main focus was baby boom women who had opposed the Vietnam War. I mean, they may not have realized that, but when you did studies, that was, that was who they sold a lot of their cars to. You know, like, you got fast cars. You got cute cars. You got bubble cars. You got mini cars. You got, you know, all these different types of differentiation, levels of luxury. And in a big market like that, you can really go fine in that differentiation. So I would urge you, when you're thinking about your company, your industry, how to fit into it, don't lock yourself into the same dimension that everybody else is thinking about. Spread out. Look around. Study other industries. This is Gary Hoover. I'll see you later.